Hello, hi, and welcome to my first ever YouTube tutorial. Uh, this is the start of the journey I talked about in my introduction, where we're going to learn to program. We're going to learn how to make some apps. And uh, as I've mentioned, I use Zojo as my development environment of choice and the programming language of choice. Uh, so we need to go and get it, okay, and install it. Now, I'm not going to hold your hand uh, in how to install it. I'm going to assume you at least know how to install an app on your computer. If not, then um, I would refer you to elsewhere and come back when you can. So we need to go to zojo.com, xojo.com. We'll go to download, download Zojo, and then click the download button. I'm not going to bother because I already have it installed. It's just worth um, mentioning that uh, Zojo has many different releases. It releases two or three big kind of updates every year um, and uh, where they add new features or fix some bugs etc and so we're currently came out today it looks like uh, uh zojo 2021 release 1.1 so release one would have been it was a, a big release that came out a couple of months ago i think maybe a month ago um, and the point one version would just have some um, fixes and some small tweaks most likely um, i always try and keep up to date with the newest version i, I figure if there's any bugs, they've hopefully been squashed in the latest version. Anyway, get that installed. And when that's installed, what we'll do is we'll open it up. And now I've opened up the Zojo application, which is also known as the Zojo IDE. Okay, IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. Now, that uh, essentially is the application that you will use to make your own applications. And uh, from now on forwards, I'll just call it the IDE. When you start a new, when you want to start a new project, you've got four options to pick from. You need to decide what type of project am I going to make. You can make a desktop app, uh, so an application that will run on Mac, Windows, or Linux. You can make a web app, something that you, you'd install on a server, and then you'd interact with it with a browser uh, like Chrome or Safari. You can make a console app, which is a text-based application. Uh, that you would typically interact with um, <clears throat> at the command prompt on Windows or the terminal in Mac uh, on Mac. Uh, we'll come to those a little bit later on. You might not be that familiar with them, uh, but they're extremely powerful. Uh, and finally, you can make an iOS project, uh, so an app for the iPhone or the iPad. Now, in order to develop for iOS, you need to be on a Mac. That's one of the caveats mostly because of restrictions that Apple put on development. But anyway, while we're going to have a little whistle-stop tour of the IDE, I'm just going to make a desktop project. I'm just going to call it my first app. doesn't matter what I call it. And I'm going to ignore these two fields here. They're not important for the purposes of this demonstration, but we will come back to them at some point. Okay, so this is the IDE. Okay, this is what we talk about when we talk about Zojo. All of your development will be done in this application. And it's split up into some logical areas. On the left-hand side, we have what's called the navigator. On the right-hand side, we have another panel which has two components. It has the library, which is accessed with this button up here in the corner, or the inspector, which I can click here, and it flits between the two of them. Now, the library gives us a list of controls that we can pull into our project, so things like buttons, um, timers, text fields, etc., that we can drag onto Windows and arrange as we see fit. Um, you can create your own controls, and some are built in for Zojo. And the inspector will give us a list of all the properties that we can alter about whatever is selected in the navigator. And in the middle, the large area is called the editor, and this editor will change depending on what you have selected in the editor. If it's a window, like it is currently, then we see the window. If I was to click on the library and drag a button onto the window, the button becomes selected in the navigator, and then if I click on the inspector, all of the properties of that button become apparent. If I click on the window, they change. Okay, it's all dynamic. Um, and on the top, we have the toolbar, which has um, not much really, has a run button, 
which will launch your application as it stands, assuming that it passes all the sort of internal consistency checks and you haven't made a goof in any of your programming. Uh, it will run it and you will be able to interact with it um, and uh, debug it, which is something that you may or may not be familiar with if you're not used to coding, but we will be able to look inside our app whilst it's running. Build is when you want to share your application, either to sell it, put it on an app store, or to you know give it to a colleague or a friend or whatever. Um, you would package it up into something you, know, you could share on the internet or on a USB stick or whatever, um, and that's called building. And then we've got a, a link to help, which was, shoots up the internal uh, help uh, documentation, which is uh, really useful, and feedback, which will launch a separate application, which is a place that if you found a bug, you can tell Zojo about the bug. It's, it's not something we're probably going to touch on very much in these first tutorials. The only other thing I want to... Oh, the other... one well, mustn't forget down here at the bottom, actually, these are quite important. These... Oops. These three icons down here are actually buttons. If I click the magnifying glass, I get the find and replace window. So this will let me search for um, you know, items within my uh, project uh, by name, and I can replace code, just like you can in a text editor. Clicking on the center button, I get the errors pane. So when I try and run my application or build my application, if there are any warnings or errors inside, they will appear here, and we'll go over that um, later on. And finally, we've got the uh, console pane, which we probably won't use very much, um, but this is essentially for when you write logs or errors. Um, you can view them here, and you just click the button twice and it will go away. Now, it, you might be thinking, wow, I, mean, I thought I was going to write code. Where's all the words? Where's all the sort of pretty colors and stuff and highlighting that I've seen people who've written code before? Well, um, in order to get that, we need to have somewhere to write the code. Now I'm going to go over these events and things like that that I'm adding in the next video. But just to show this is what the code editor looks like in Zojo. And we can say, we've got some code, okay. And you can see this is, what, this is what an editor would look like where you would type your code. Now, that's probably all I want to touch on in how the editor is laid out. Um, on the next video, we're going to talk about the structure of an application um, and uh, sort of the, the, the framework and the, and the sort of layout of what an app actually is and what are the components that make it up. And we're going to uh, get up and running with our first app. Okay. Thank you very much.